Red Bull Racing's parent company, Red Bull GmbH, has launched an investigation into F1 team head Horner on claimed behavioural grounds, albeit no information regarding the accusations have been disclosed. Horner has moved to categorically reject any claims against him, but this has left Christian Horner the centre of attention over the last week, and finally some of the senior staff at Red Bull have spoken about it, most notably Red Bull senior advisor Helmut Marko, who thinks that the turbulence caused by the Christian Horner investigation will go away soon. Horner met with the external attorney engaged by Red Bull GmbH to examine the claims last Friday, and up until now it is believed that the Briton has been conducting business as normal at the Milton Keynes plant. And as the F1 2024 season approaches, Marko was questioned if he will see Horner at the RB20 unveiling. Marco stated that he was unable to comment on that or the pending investigation, therefore anticipate him to remain silent on the topic in the future while the procedures are continuing. I can't tell you that and I can't say anything else on this subject, he said. As long as the investigation is ongoing or there is no result, you won't hear anything from me. It's an ongoing process. Red Bull enters the F1 2024 season as the team to beat, having won 21 of 22 Grand Prix last season, retaining both the drivers' and constructors' titles. So, obviously, with Mercedes, Ferrari and McLaren lurking, and Red Bull anticipating such teams to cause a closer competition in F1 2024, Marco wants this turbulence rectified as soon as feasible. I hope that we can get our turbulence under control quickly," he told reporters. Fortunately for Red Bull, Marco downplayed the impact of these off-track issues on their preparations for the upcoming season, which he promised were well under control. Fortunately, our car is ready and we are well prepared, he said. Verstappen will begin the 2024 season pursuing his fourth consecutive world championship, which would tie Sebastian Vettel's record with Red Bull from 2010 to 2013. But Helmut Marko isn't the only one talking out about Horner in the last 24 hours, as Bernie Eccleston, the former F1 boss, has also explained his position following allegations of participation in Christian Horner's current troubles at Red Bull. All sorts of conjecture have circulated in the days and weeks following the allegations, with the sole confirmed truth being that Horner met with an external specialised lawyer appointed by Red Bull GmbH last Friday to explain his side of the event. According to one allegation in German media, Bernie Eccleston, the former F1 chairman who is known to be friends with Horner, learnt the facts and asked Horner to retire or stand down from his position as Red Bull team head. Ecclestone is no new to controversy. He was recently convicted guilty of fraud for failing to register over £400 million stored in a Singapore trust. However, Ecclestone has moved to social media to explain the suspicions surrounding his involvement. In a tweet reshared by wife Fabiana, the FIA Vice President for Sport, Ecclestone denied passing any advice on Christian Horner. To clarify reports by newspapers that I had urged or suggested that Christian Horner should step down from his position in Red Bull is entirely untrue, Ecclestone said in a statement. While Red Bull GmbH is conducting an inquiry into Horner, the team head attended Tuesday's Red Bull RB20 Shakedown filming day at Silverstone and will attend Red Bull's premiere of the 2024 RB20 in Milton Keynes, the team has revealed. Thus, after two weeks of uncertainty over Horner's future, with Red Bull as parent company Red Bull GmbH launched an inquiry into the F1 team's CEO. The racing team has announced Horner will attend the Red Bull RB20 premiere on Thursday. Could this also mean that Red Bull is planning their future with Horner still? Red Bull and the F1 team have not revealed any of the specifics of the accusations. But Horner has been conducting business as normal at the Milton Keynes plant after meeting with the external lawyer. Horner is also said to have attended Red Bull's filming day shakedown with the RB20 on Tuesday, and his participation at the Red Bull factory unveiling on Thursday, February 15th, has been confirmed. The live-streamed introduction of the RB20 will include Horner in his role as Red Bull Racing CEO and team boss, as well as racing drivers Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. The Red Bull RB20 premiere show will be broadcast live on the team's social media outlets beginning at 19.30 UK time. While Horner continues to do his Red Bull obligations while the inquiry is continuing, no deadline for a conclusion has been disclosed by Red Bull GmbH. It is expected that the inquiry of the Red Bull chief would take many weeks to conclude. The opening race of the 2024 Formula One season starts on March 2nd, and if the investigation isn't finished by then, we'll see Horner on the grid.
It is crucial to stress that the suspected offences must be properly and fairly investigated. Both parties should be heard and given the opportunity to express themselves, and Horner is presumed innocent unless proven guilty. That, and only that, should determine the consequence, whether Horner loses his job, receives a warning, or takes no action at all. However, rumblings of division within Red Bull's larger and more sophisticated ecology are inescapable. A power struggle despite the team's most successful season ever in 2023, with 21 victories out of 22, the most dominant season in F1's 74-year history. However, success is not always indicative of stability. Horner lost his closest backer when team co-founder Dietrich Mateschitz passed in October 2022. The man who trusted this young British newcomer to lead Red Bull into the top tier of international motorsport with just junior Formula victory to his name. That first year, 2005, laid the groundwork for the seven driver and six constructor world titles that followed. Horner teamed forces with Dr. Helmut Marco, a former racer from whom he had purchased a used caravan a few years before. Marco was appointed in command of Red Bull's junior project since the energy drink company eventually acquired Minardi as its sister team, Toro Rosso. Interestingly, Marco works for the overall firm rather than Red Bull Racing, and he continues to do so into his 80s. Horner's second hire was far more significant. Adrian Newey noticed something he liked while dining with Horner in Monaco. Horner enticed Newey to join Red Bull from McLaren, offering an exciting, daring project and a £10 million pay. As a result, the dynamic triad of contrasting personalities was formed. The team of three has led Red Bull to remarkable success, as seen by their frequent appearances in races throughout the world in recent years. Mercedes has been the dominant power in Formula One both before and after their breakthrough at the start of the hybrid era. Since Ferrari or McLaren last won the championship, Red Bull has won seven times. But Mateschitz's death had a twist. Marco and Horner argued, most notably over the appointment of Nick de Vries for the sibling team, and Horner felt justified when the driver was fired after a bad start last season. Marco has also been into trouble after making a rude remark regarding Sergio Perez's heritage. Despite a year of unrivaled dominance, 2023 was not without challenges. Red Bull's 2022 triumph was also tarnished by their infringement of the expense cap. Those rumblings have gone into overdrive. According to Dutch media, the relationship between Jos Verstappen, father of Max, the team's top driver and three-time world champion, and Horner has lately degenerated. Verstappen Jr. is a very devoted individual who is thought to be closer to his father and Marco than Horner. All of this does not bode well for Horner, as there is talk that Red Bull GmbH is eager to reclaim greater authority over the team's headquarters in Milton Keynes. Their CEO, Oliver Mintzlaff, has even been linked with replacing Horner if the 50-year-old leaves. Newey's partnership with Horner is thought to be more successful, contrary to what we reported yesterday. Despite having opposing personalities, Horner is vocal and opinionated. Newey is considerably more introverted, they implicitly accept one another's judgment, and some publications have stated that removing one implies another can depart as well. Even if that's not the case, would Newey want to continue without his right-hand man? He has already remarked about passing down Ferrari twice and his regret for not working alongside Lewis Hamilton. Conveniently, the two F1 behemoths are now teaming up next year. But the entire in-house soap opera at Red Bull exposes the complex cut-and-thrust dynamics at work in a sport known for it. Ecclestone and former FIA leader Max Mosley were feuding one day, and then best friends the next. F1 and the FIA, the regulating body, are also not close partners these days, considering FIA head Mohammed Ben Sulaim's tendency for scandal. Controversies in the late 2000s, such as Spygate and Crashgate, unfolded within the complicated web of the sport's political affairs. Again, none of this should be relevant to the claims against Horner. The appointment of an external barrister to the case is wise and suitable in this regard. In theory, it indicates that no internal influence should be projected. But even if Horner arrives in Bahrain on March 2nd in command of the Red Bull juggernaut, he may be watching the action on the track with one eye over his shoulder. What are your thoughts? Will Horner be gone by the first race? Or will this all swiftly go away like Helmut Marko has stated? Let us know in the comments down below.